Hello, my name's Lara. And I'm Sanena. And we're part of the clinical genetics team. In this video, we're going to teach you how to draw a pedigree and show you that it's a quick and easy way to look at patterns of inheritance. We're going to teach you how to interpret it to determine the risks of passing on a genetic condition to a future generation. As a brief introduction, here's a run through of genetics and inheritance. Humans have approximately 20,000 genes. A gene is a length of DNA that codes for one protein. DNA is tightly wound into structures called chromosomes, and humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes. One chromosome from each pair is inherited from each parent. Each of the two copies of each gene is called an allele. 22 of the chromosomes are called autosomes and look the same in males and females. They are named in order of descending size from 1 to 22. The last pair are the sex chromosomes. Males have an X and a Y chromosome, whereas females have two X chromosomes. To start with, let's go through the symbols used in genetics to represent different family members and the relationships between them. A circle is used in the pedigree to represent a female, whereas a square is used to represent a male. If a symbol is filled in, it indicates that somebody has a condition, whereas if it's left blank, it means that they're unaffected. A diagonal line through a symbol infers that a patient is deceased. We map out relationships by drawing lines between the symbols. A horizontal line indicates that a couple are in a relationship, and vertical lines connect parents to children and connect generations. A double line between a couple indicates that they're in a consanguineous relationship. This means that they're related both by blood and by marriage. Twins are shown like this, and identical twins are joined by an extra line. Let's look at the pedigree we've just drawn to see if we can work out the inheritance pattern. Here, we see that affected family members are in every generation. There are affected males and females, and this gives us a clue that this could be autosomal dominant. Autosomal dominant inheritance means that a person needs to have one copy of an altered gene or mutated allele to have the disorder. They also have one normal copy. This means that a person with the condition has a 50% chance of passing on the mutated allele to each of their children. Here are some autosomal dominant conditions that are seen commonly. It's important to keep in mind that not all dominant conditions are fully penetrant. When there's reduced penetrance, only some individuals with the gene alterations have clinical symptoms. This means that it can look like condition skips generations. Be wary of this when considering mode of inheritance in your pedigree. So here's a pedigree of a family with a condition with a different mode of inheritance. What are the differences that you can see when we compare to the last pedigree we went through? Here you can see that the affected family members are in the same generation. In fact, they're brother and sister. There are fewer family members affected overall, but both males and females are still affected. This is autosomal recessive inheritance. In this mode of inheritance, both alleles for genes must be altered for an individual to manifest the condition. Carriers of autosomal recessive conditions only have one mutated allele. In the clear majority of carriers, they have no clinical features of the disorder. When two carriers have children together, they each have a 50-50 risk of passing on their normal copy and passing on their mutated copy. Two carriers of a recessive condition have a 1 in 4 or 25% risk of having an affected child. The chance of the child having no mutated alleles is also 1 in 4. The risk of having a child who is a carrier is 1 or 2 or 50%. We all carry 4 or 5 recessive changes in our genes. These may only come to light if we have children with another carrier. It's important to ask about any consanguineous relationships when considering autosomal recessive inheritance because consanguineous families share more genetic material so have an increased risk of being carriers for the same condition. Examples of autosomal recessive conditions that we frequently see in the clinic include... Here is a very simple pedigree for you. You can see that there is a consanguineous couple with one affected child out of three. Instinct should alert you to the higher risk of this being an autosomal recessive condition given the parental consanguinity. However, the DDD study showed us that the prevalence of new dominant conditions amongst children with consanguineous parents was higher than expected, accounting for up to 6% of cases. Therefore, make sure you don't forget that there could be other modes of inheritance in consanguineous families. Here's another pedigree for you. 
What differences do you see and what mode of inheritance do you think this is? Here you can see that only boys are affected. They are not present in every generation and they are all linked through a female relative. There's no male-to-male -male transmission. This is X-linked recessive inheritance. This is due to a mutation in a gene on the X chromosomes. Females have two X chromosomes, so a change on one is compensated for by the second normal copy. Therefore, females normally don't have symptoms, and if they are present, they tend to be mild. Males only have one X chromosome, together with a Y chromosome. Therefore, if there's a change in the gene on, an X, on the X chromosome, they don't have a normal copy to compensate, and they tend to have much more severe and early onset symptoms than carrier females. If a woman is a carrier of an X-linked disorder, it's helpful to consider the sexes of her potential children to determine the risk separately. If she has a boy, he has a 50% chance of inheriting her normal X chromosome and a 50% chance of inheriting the abnormal copy and getting the condition. If she has a girl, she has a 50% chance of inheriting the abnormal copy and therefore also being a carrier, and a 50% chance of inheriting the normal X chromosome and not being a carrier. As the chance of having a boy or a girl is 50-50, the overall chance of having an affected child with each pregnancy is 1 in 4, or 25%. If a female carrier is pregnant, there are different testing strategies available. For example, a, no a recently developed tool is called non-invasive prenatal diagnosis. This only requires a blood sample from the mother, so it doesn't carry any risk of miscarriage and can be performed as early as 8 to 10 weeks gestation. This looks for free fetal DNA in the maternal blood, which can be tested for the presence of genes on the Y chromosome to identify whether the fetus is male. If a female fetus is found, the parents can be reassured that they will not have an affected boy. If a male fetus is found, the parents can be offered further testing for the X-linked disorder, which may require an invasive test. If an affected man has a son, he always passes him his Y chromosome. Therefore, males affected by X-linked recessive disorders never have affected sons. If, however, he has a daughter, he will always pass them his altered X chromosome, so all of his daughters will be carriers. Relatively common X-linked recessive conditions include In contrast, in X-linked dominant conditions, only one altered copy of a gene on the X chromosome is required to have the condition. Therefore, all females with an altered copy will be affected. Usually, if there isn't a second normal copy to compensate, as in males who only have one X chromosome, these conditions are often lethal in utero. Therefore, affected males are very rarely seen. Examples of this are Rett syndrome and incontinentia pigmenti. In summary, drawing pedigrees is useful and easier than you think and is a key tool to identify the mode of inheritance. This can guide you to diagnosis and facilitate accurate genetic counselling. We've gone through four different modes of inheritance today and the risk of passing on each type of condition. Please get in touch if you have any further questions.